we love introducing you to the experts and they can take all sorts of different forms of uh, of experience and interest. And today, Dr. Ravi Madi, urologist at Clemenceau Medical Center, is in the studio following just an incredible surgery, which we're going to be hearing about more in a minute, treating a bladder, a bladder cancer with a patient with a completely different approach, robotic assisted surgical platform and creating a new bladder inside the patient's body during that surgery using a small piece of intestine. As I said, we're going to be hearing from patient Tarek and a little bit more about that procedure soon. But before we get to that incredible (laughs) accomplishment, um, you're talking there about work as a urologist and the different body parts that that encompasses. And it sounds like no day, no day is the same. But let's talk bladders in general, because we've talked about all the body parts, you can imagine, from literally top to toe. But I have to say, they've been a little, little bit neglected. How are you, Dr. Ravi? I'm good. How are you? Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. What, can I ask you, why did you want to work in this area of medicine in particular? <laughs> Actually, urology is more um, diverse and more bigger specialty than most people think. You know, we deal with... Uh, multiple organs, starting from the adrenal gland or the gland above the kidney, of course, the kidneys, the ureter, which is the tube of the kidney, the urinary bladder, and in men, of course, the prostate, which is, as you know, is a big, uh, important organ in men, and of course, goes all the way to the testicles and the urethra and the penis. So it's a complex, uh, very diverse uh, specialty, and I love it. We do lots of surgeries and medical management as well. What's trending in urology? Have you noticed anything um, in, in, in any patterns, any common common you know, issues, especially here in the UAE? Yeah, no, no, urology, as you know, as any medical subspecialties is evolving. You know, we are introducing lots of new technology. I personally, I'm a big fan of robotic surgery, and I've been doing that for, for maybe 20 years now. What? Uh, 20 yeah, years? Yeah, You've been living it, in the future <laughs> for ages. The robotic surgery is not very new. It's relatively new in Dubai, but has been there for more than 20 years. And uh, it's very exciting. It first keeps evolving as everything else, uh, newer instruments, newer technique. And also uh, at Clemenceau Medical Center, we introduce a new treatment modality, which is very, very new, actually, in the Arab world. It's called Haifu. Uh, therapy, which is focal treatment uh, for prostate cancer. Wow. Okay. If you've got any questions relating to any of the body parts that Dr. Ravi's been talking about, you're more than welcome to reach out anonymously if you prefer. Or I can imagine nothing embarrasses you or shocks you anymore. <laughs> He's seen it all yeah, um, on 4001. We're also going to be hearing from one of his patients, Tarek, an incredible surgery, treating a patient with bladder cancer using a very different approach. Yes, the robots that Dr. Rabi is uh, such a fan of, but creating a new bladder inside Tarek's body using a small piece of intestine. Incredible things is happening here in the UAE. We're going to be hearing more about that. But can we talk about bladders and common problems and even bladder cancers? What might drive someone to come and see a urologist when it comes to daily issues or quite painful issues that they might have with their bladder, Dr. Rabi? Yes. So as you know, the the bladder is an important organ. Of course, the, the, its function is more than just storing urine. Of course, uh, the urine comes from the kidneys. They come to the bladder. They stay there for a while. And then once the bladder is almost full, you have the sensation you want to go to the toilet to urinate. And then when the bladder will contract and the urine goes out. So it seems simplistic, but... Um, it's more complicated than that. And of course, there are many diseases can affect the bladder. As you know, urine tract infection or cystitis, infection of the bladder is very common. Um, I see almost every day on a daily basis, women or men coming to me with urine tract infection. Now, okay, I've got a couple of bladder questions for you. Well, someone said, can you naturally have a small bladder? So you know how some people yeah, say, oh, yeah, I've, got, yeah. I've got a tiny bladder. Is that true? So- I, it's, uh, saying small bladder is not medically correct. I know I hear it all the time. Actually, this is an entity called overactive bladder. This is the scientific or the medical word for it, which is basically the bladder. Uh, the bladder always communicates with the brain. Uh, when the bladder is full, it sends a message to the brain telling, hey, I'm full. So the person will have the sensation or the feeling, and then the brain will give the order to the bladder, okay, go and contract and go to the toilet and the bathroom. The overactive bladder, or what's called small bladder, is is that uh, it's not really a disease. It's an entity where uh, when the bladder is a little bit full, let's say instead of being full with 300 milliliter of urine, it will be when there's only 50 or 100 milliliter, it will give that message to the brain. It's a false message to some extent, but the person feels that the urge to go and they will go. 
So it's related to some nervous uh, system um, being irritable, you know, maybe some anxious people by nature. If uh, people drink lots of coffee, caffeine, as you know, is a strong irritant to the bladder. So it will keep the bladder irritated. And that's why it's a common entity. You said there about bladder capacity. Mm -hmm. So about, what, 300 milliliters? Typically, yes. A normal bladder should be full around 300 milliliters before it sends that message to the brain. Uh, up till that time, the person will have the bladder filling uh, without that sensation. So that's what we call the compliance, basically. The compliance of the bladder is how much the bladder is being able to fill without sending the message to the brain of uh, being full. So do you help patients with incontinence problems? Yes, incontinence problem is a very common problem, especially in women uh, in the aging population. As you know, the pelvic floor muscles get flaccid and more lax. And with that, uh, the support of the bladder becomes weakened. And as a result, many women will suffer from some type of what we call stress incontinence, which is leaking of urine up in coughing, up in sneezing, up in laughing, up in standing up and running. It's less common in men, but we see it, of course, in men. It's one of the common entity we deal with. You're an oncologist and urologist, uh, Dr. Abby, there at Clemenceau. Um, would you mind explaining a little bit about bladder cancer? I mean, that sounds like one of the most horrendous um, yes. types to have. Would Not that there's a great one, but would you mind explaining some of the red flags, the symptoms that a patient might come to you with that might indicate you investigating with cancer? Yes, that's a very good question. As you said, bladder cancer is unfortunately relatively common cancer in men and women. It's more common in men, but we see it in women. And one of the risk factors, and I want anyone, everyone to listen to that, is smoking. Smoking, Why? cigarette. Why? How could... Smoking is... Uh, cigarette has less of carcinogens, which are ingredients that cause cancer. And when the patient or the person inhales the smoke, it goes through the blood, the circulation, and they are filtered through the kidney, and they go to the urine, and they stay in the urine, because the urine stays in the bladder for a while. And that strong uh, carcinogens will irritate the bladder from inside, and with time it can cause a bladder Gosh, cancer. You think about smoking in cancers, I think, obviously, lungs, heart, maybe throat and, and tongue. But yeah. you, but that's so interesting to think yes. about, that filtering yes. system and, and where those carcinogenics end up residing yes, and impacting. Yes, that's very, very good, because most people will think about smoking and lung cancer, but Gosh. very few know that... Cancer, uh, bladder cancer is caused by smoking, number one, by far. What other risk factors could there be? Is there any genetic component or any other lifestyle elements? Yes, uh, smoking is number one. Of course, exposure uh, through carcinogens, through sometimes, unfortunately, through painting, like environment. people, environmental uh, pollution, um, po people who work with dyes, uh, uh, dyeing uh, leather in particular, they have also, they can inhale those carcinogens. So it's environmental, but by far the number one risk factor is smoking. I had a <clears> message <throat> here, you mentioned UTIs there, and I think I think it's, it's one of these things, some people just seem to get them a lot. You know, I've got, an, I've got cystitis again, I've got another UTI, um, and a message here saying, what about preventing them? So being, you know, proactive about, yes. about it, and I guess treatment as well, if you wouldn't mind, Dr. Rabi. Yes, so... Up to 60% of women will have UTI in their lifetime. So it's a very common problem. And unfortunately, a portion of the, a percentage of those women will have recurrent UTI. Sometimes every one month, I have women coming to me and they said, I have every one month, I have UTI. And this God, is very miserable. That's very unfortunately, it's an entity hard to uh, fix because we don't know exactly why. Some there woman, seems to be quite a lot of, uh, you mentioned stress there and incontinence, but also stress and anxiety in, in UTIs seem to be quite quite linked as well. Uh, to some extent, uh, with UTI, I think there are factors we really don't know. Some women are just prone, their body are, is more prone to get the infection. We encourage women to uh, do proper uh, proper toileting. Basically, they, ha they are supposed to drink plenty of water to flush out any bacteria out, mm -hmm. not to hold urine for a long time, to go every two, three hours to the bathroom to urinate, even if they don't have the sensation. Because the more the urine stays in the bladder, the higher the chance for the bacteria to climb into the bladder. It's an ascending infection, so the bacteria literally climbs into the bladder and causes infection. Is there any truth in the, you know, cranberry juice fix? Yeah, cranberry juice, we used to believe that it plays a role. Uh, now its role is becoming more questionable because there are studies suggesting that really cranberry does not make a big difference, whether it's tablet or, or, or you know, a drink or a juice. 
Um, still, it's a common practice. I, I mean, I cannot say don't or don't. We don't have strong evidence that really it makes a big difference. See, so maybe maybe take it out of your shopping basket. What does make a difference? Because if you are getting a UTI every month, to be blasting it with medication can cause must cause other problems in your body as well. Yes, uh, we we have several measures that we recommend to tell the the woman, the lady who is or having ma- a man. A man is much uh, is different because men they have different anatomy, so they are more prone to more serious. So infection in men is more serious because it can affect the prostate, mm-hmm. and they can have prostatitis, which is a really serious infection that needs IV antibiotics sometimes and even hospitalization. Women they have less serious infection because a better infection is easier to treat. But it's more common because of their anatomy. They have shorter urethra, shorter uh, uh, urine channel, and that's why are more prone. So we tell them to drink plenty of water, not to hold urine, and to a uh, way of not to overdo uh, it with the hygiene because sometimes a woman thinks, oh, I'm like cleaning myself a lot and still, but this is maybe a bad thing because it can kill the normal vaginal flora, the good bacteria that protects. And, and this is a whole the industry, you know, intimate yes. washes and wipes and yeah. all of the rest of it. Yeah, it's those like, actually, unfortunately, can really bad because they can kill the normal vaginal flora. Um, we were talking about common bladder issues there, and I wanted to come back to red flags around bladder cancer, which is something that you treat there. Would you mind explaining and maybe making us aware of things that we really do need to be tuned into that might lead us to seek an expert such as yourself? Yes, so a main and important sign of bladder cancer is blood in the urine. Almost 90% of men who ha- or women who have bladder cancer will have blood in the urine. Most, In most cases, that blood is microscopic or what we call gross hematuria, basically it's a blood that the person will see. They go, or he or she will go to the toilet to urinate, and then it's fresh blood coming out so in like the urine. pink? Blood. Sometimes pink, sometimes fresh red with <gasps> blood clots even. Gosh. And usually it's total, like from the beginning till the end of the urination, and it's painless. So it's, there is no pain. The person will go and just blood coming out with the urine with blood clots, painless. This is a warning sign because 50% of those p- patients will have bladder cancer. That sounds terrifying, to be it honest. It is terrifying when someone will see blood coming out <laughs> with the pee, but yes, that will be a warning sign. When you say warning sign, I just don't want people listening to freak out. Could that be a case of something that could be treated very early without blood removal, without chemo, radio? Yes. Or could that be a sign that actually this is quite advanced? Yes. So if someone has uh, blood in the urine, uh, we investigate. And if we find a tumor inside the bladder, the good news is that 70% of those tumors are what we call them superficial. So they are not deep penetrating into the wall of the bladder. And in that case, we can treat the cancer without the necessity of removing the bladder. We remove the bladder only in few percentage of those patients. Which is what you did with patient Tarek, a really complex Mm -hmm. urological surgery, Dr. Rabi. Tell us a little bit about the approach you took, because it sounds like um, to create a new bladder inside his body. Uh, Tell us more. Yeah, Mr. Tarek is uh, a young gentleman who unfortunately was diagnosed with bladder cancer that went into the wall of the bladder. So as a result, the only or the best curative treatment option for him is to remove the whole bladder. And of course, when you remove the whole bladder, we have to replace it with something. The urine has to go somewhere. And because he's young and healthy, we I performed to him what we call a neobladder, which is uh, we cut a small piece of the intestine, around 60 centimeter piece of the small intestine, and we fashioned it and we tailored it and we made it look like a normal bladder. And we replace it, we hook it to the place where the native bladder was. So we remove the native bladder and from that new bladder, we reattach the tubes, the ureter, and uh, we make it uh, function and look like a normal bladder. And everything was done actually in his case with the robot. And in the same surgery as the removal? So all Absolutely. at one time? Yes, Goodness me. yes. Right. This that- is a big surgery in urology. It takes around six hours. Uh, of course, with the robotic, there are lots of advantage in doing it robotically. Let's hear from Tarek. This type of uh, medical case, it uh, affects not only the patient's life, but his family as well. So uh, from the date we discover the cancer to the date we finished the treatment, the chemotherapy and the surgery took around six, seven months. So time was very crucial here. So doing the surgery, it helped me a lot 
to robotics to recover faster and to go back to my normal life quicker than the normal procedures. It was amazing surgery, even though it was very long one, but the recovery time in the hospital, instead of eight days as uh, regularly known, it took me five days only to leave the hospital and go back home. And less than 20 days, I was able to go back to work. Wow. Tarek there talking about the surgery that Dr. Rabi performed at Clemenceau. We've got just a minute left. Um, you are really at the you know the cutting edge, pun fully intended as a surgeon when it comes to technologies using robotics for decades now. You're also really passionate about spreading awareness around prostate cancer and I would love to talk to you about that a little bit more in depth um, on another day. But right now, would you mind just telling us a little bit about HIFU, which is something that is really unique and actually incredible thing to have in your toolkit as a surgeon? Yeah. So as you know, the one of the most common cancer in men is prostate cancer. And when the prostate cancer is localized, uh, an early stage, we have different ways of treating it. One, of course, is robotic surgery. The other one I'm excited about and we just introduced at the Clemenceau Medical Center is Sonoblade HIFU, which is high intensity focal ultrasound, where we emit, where we have a machine uh, that will send the um, ultrasound wave in a focused way that will kill only the cancer cells and spare the rest of the prostate. So at the advantage, we can cure the cancer was almost no side effect, was very minimal side effect. So I'm excited we are the first to launch it and actually in the Arab world. Mm -hmm. And this technology has been tested in Europe and the US for more than 10 years. So it's well if, uh, proven to be effective, curative. Uh, of course, it's not for everyone, but it is a tool that we are offering right now. Thank you so much for your time. As I said, it's hugely exciting to hear about the work that's being done and the lives that are being saved and changed um, through your work, Dr. Rabi. I've had loads of people asking for your details, whether it is, you know, UTIs or prostate or, you know, any cancers that you'd like to um, get Dr. Rabi's take on. We'd be very happy to introduce you. You just need to send me the word doc, D-O-C. Um, 24001. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Get back to clinic. I'm sure you've got people waiting for you. Dr. Ravi Madi, urologist and oncologist, Clemenceau Medical Centre. This content is for informational purposes only and is not intend to substitute professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment.